So this is week one update. The uh, battery came in and it's been mounted and you can see it's nice and solid in here. It actually fits really quite nicely. The only mod I had to do was um, a small adapter plug for the actual power cable or charging cable. Um, you know, just because with it being inside the housing of or the, the tray of the um, scooter, there's not really any place to plug through um, to plug in the charger or uh, actually unlock it either. Um, so I'm just going with um, putting a, an extension cable with a, a female plug on it and I will just charge it with the uh, extension cable. I don't want to drill a hole in the tray because I don't want to have any additional water get in there than necessary. I do have a small little drain plug down here. Um, it's not very big but you know it will allow the water to kind of escape as it's uh, you know falling into there. Um, the second thing that we've got is now some new hand grips and a throttle. So this throttle has a voltage sensor in it. It's a keyed throttle as well, so I can turn the power on and off to the bike. And uh, yeah, it actually matches the color, you know, blue for, for the blue uh, Charlie. Um, what's coming in next is there is, um, this is the original speed sensor in here. Um, this thing, it's probably reed based and I don't want to use it. So I'm waiting for a hull sensor um, or hull based version. And then I'm going to fit that and then remove all the old wiring. Um, I still have to figure out uh, a speed sensor for this motor because with the Charlie, the balance on this bike is really poor. The, the center of gravity kind of sits almost on top of the rear wheel so this thing is very very poppy it will pop out from on you with any significant torque on the motor and it is a 750 watt motor so there's lots of lots of torque on it um, the other thing that we did was we got in um, an air end for the rear tire you know it's totally deflated and to get something in to get to the valve is nearly impossible. So we bought just a, an off-the-shelf uh, version of this and ground it down so that it would actually fit through and press up against the valve. So that, that actually hopefully will work out okay. Um, the other thing we've done is the new LEDs have come in and they were the cheapest ones I could get um, off of Amazon. And you know being cheap they actually broke as soon as we tried to put them in. So what had broken was this outer flange and uh, it actually just, the whole center part just popped out. And so I had to reseat these and then epoxy them in. So now, now they actually work okay. So these will run off of uh, like somewhere around 10 to, um, I think 50 volts, 50 to 60 volts, somewhere around there. I'm only gonna run them off 12, so no issue there. Um, they draw about 0.2 amps and so you know it's burning about one-fifth of the original power from the incandescent was there so this was drawing I believe an amp um, an amp at uh, 12 volts so 24 watts for just two bulbs is insane now we're down to about five watts um, what else have we got going here so the horn I took off, this is pulling about one amp when it's active and it is friggin' loud. Um, not sure if I'm gonna use this because the, the plan is, is to run all the accessories off of um, a board, control board up the top here that will be sitting on this uh, plate up here. And um, it, it will have a 12 volt DC-DC that's gonna take the 48 and bring it down to 12 volts and it's only going to be able to supply three amps and then there's going to be another one where you know there's a the old controller used to be we're going to put a new dc dc controller here that we're going to design and build and it's also going to have a three amp um, dc dc 12 volt supply on it so this guy will end up probably supplying the um, rear light 
which also we replaced with an LED bulb. Um, and uh, it will probably um, also power the contactor. Now, I don't know if I'm going to use this one or not because it actually pulls quite a bit. It takes about an amp to pull it in. Um, there may be better options uh, for a contactor. Um, I'm looking at another one I think is about 200 milliamps, um, but it's not really intended for this type of application. So we'll see. Uh, it is a DC contactor though. Uh, I think the last thing that we did was we pulled out the old key. And uh, the key assembly is pretty big. It takes up a lot of hoops. Pretty big and takes up a lot of space in the, uh, the upper housing up here. So we have a gap in here that we're going to have to fill with something. Um, not sure what feature we're going to put in there. And uh, you know we've got our nice fancy new set of keys, of course with Mr. Lego Blue Man on it. And this is going to be a really fun ride once it's all done, um, because having the ability to um, go up above 24 volts is going to give this thing a much higher top speed, which is going to be frankly quite illegal for um, most North American uh, streets. But you know that's maybe what that spot's going to be for. Maybe it'll be the special little switch that you know gives us the terrible boost. And uh, yeah, so that is pretty much all that we've got done this week. Um, hopefully next week we'll have some details on uh, what the controller card will look like for up here, at least from a schematic point of view. And, you know, we're hoping to get this built in the next couple of weeks, um, you know, barring any issues with equipment. Uh, you know, we'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching.